Hi guys, I'm Miss Kara. Thanks for joining me here today at Meet an Artist, Be an Artist. We're gonna learn about two different artists that you probably have not heard about in art class. But before we start that, I wanted to go over a few art terms with you so that when I use them, you're not confused. The first one is abstract. And when we talk about abstract art, we're talking about making art that is not representational. So you're making art that doesn't look like the thing that inspired you to make art. Um, and then the second term that I wanna share with you is abstract expressionism. Um, and abstract expression, expressionism is bold, gestural, and large scale. Behind me, I have an example of abstract expressionism. Uh, we've got a few more words here. We've got composition, and that's how things are arranged um, on the artwork. Medium is the materials that you're gonna work with, and scale is the size of the artwork. Is it small scale? Is it medium scale? Is it large scale? So we'll talk about that too. And then we're also gonna talk about things like shapes and colors and lines. Are you ready to meet some artists? I hope so. So our first one is an artist who is sadly no longer with us. Her name is Mildred Thompson, and she was born in Florida in 1936. She studied art all over. She studied in Washington, D.C., in the state of Maine, in New York City, Germany, and Italy. In addition to art, she was also interested in scientific study of time and sound and space. Her goal as an artist was to make invisible forces visible. So we're gonna to go to her website and here we're gonna see some of her paintings from the 1980s. And if you look at them, you can see that they're colorful. There's lots of shapes scattered across the canvas. Um, they feel energetic. There's a real sense of movement. Like these paintings are just a tiny peek into a whole world of these shapes that she's sharing with us. They're brightly colored. Um, and now we're gonna look at her paintings from the 1990s. Wow! So now the background color is much more uniform. That means that the color across the back of the canvas is pretty much the same, or it's a variation of one color. And then on top of that background color, we have all these lines and dashes and circles. Here you can really see that she's trying to show us those unseen forces. So these works have titles like Magnetic Fields, Music of the Spheres, Radiation Exploration, String Theory. She's using these bright colors that pop up off the canvas. Uh, she's using lines to convey movement. She's got these shapes scattered throughout that sort of echo the lines. I love the idea of using art to show us ideas and theories from science. So while we keep these images fresh in our minds, are you ready to make some art like Mildred Thompson? All right, let's go. Before we can begin to paint, we have to talk about our supplies. So when I'm getting ready to paint at home, the first thing I like to do is lay down a big sheet of paper so that if I accidentally paint off of my paper, I don't get any paint on the table. It makes cleanup a lot easier and it'll make your grownups a lot happier. So this is just our paper that we're gonna be working on top of. Now to paint like Mildred Thompson, we are not gonna do large scale installations. We are gonna paint on a piece of paper. I have here some watercolor paper, which I got from the craft store, but you can use any kind of paper that's heavier than printer paper. Because if you do watercolor on printer paper, your paper will fall apart and that's no fun. So we have our paper. And then because it's watercolor, I have two cups of water. I like to use two cups of water so that I can have one to clean my dirty brush and one cup that always stays clean. It makes it a lot easier to um, make sure that my colors don't get muddy that way. And then I like to have a paper towel to put under my water cups. 
so that if I need to dab off my brush, it's right there. And then of course, we're gonna need some watercolor paint. So I have that right here. And then I have two brushes. And because we're gonna use a lot of color, I have a big brush and then I have a small brush that came with my watercolors. And then you remember how Mildred Thompson had all those fun, colorful lines that went through her painting? I have colored pencils and I have crayons. So I think we're gonna start with the crayons. And the fun thing about crayons is because they're made of wax, when you paint over them, the paint doesn't stick to that part of the paper. So I think I'm gonna do orange and I'm gonna do a bunch of ovals that are concentric. That means each oval fits inside the next oval. And this one kind of reminds me of her magnetic fields painting. So I've got my ovals and then I want to do a brightly colored background. And so I'm going to get my brush really wet. I'm going to drop it in this yellow. We're going to let it sit for a minute because it takes a minute for the water to activate the paint. All right. So, oh, there we go. Now we're starting to get some yellow and I'm just going to cover my whole page in this yellow paint. And you see how when I'm painting over the orange, it's not going anywhere and it's not becoming more yellow. Yeah, that's because the wax from the crayon is interfering with the paint's ability to soak into the paper. And that's what happens with watercolor. It kind of soaks into the paper that you're using, right? So you see how here I painted off the page, but I don't have to worry about cleaning up the table because it's gonna stay on my paper that I put down. All right, oh, I got some hair there. Let me see if I can get that off because I don't want hair in my painting. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Maybe if I get my brush a little bit wetter. Uh, uh, uh. There we go, say bye-bye hair. No, oh, thank you. All right, now before we start dry, or drawing with our colored pencils, we need to let this dry. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna wait on that, and then uh, we'll come back and we'll draw with our colored pencils. Okay, so our painting is mostly dry. And the funny thing about watercolor painting is when it's wet, it feels cold to the touch. So now that I'm touching this and it feels like it's about the same temperature as this paper, I know that it's mostly dry. So we're gonna get out our colored pencils and I'm thinking about We'll do Thompson's paintings of um, the magnetic fields. And she used lots of reds and oranges. Um, and we have a yellow background. And then she also, I don't know if you noticed, there was also some blue in there, which I thought was pretty interesting because uh, it provides a nice contrast. So we have this here. And this is kind of the direction our stuff is gonna go. And so we can start making marks with our colored pencil. So I'm gonna start here and I'm just gonna go boop and just make little lines here. Little lines, nothing special. Oh, and my painting's still wet here because you see when I get down here and I try to make a mark, it doesn't really leave a mark, but that's okay. Bigger. So we still have that same sense of movement, right? Here we go. And then we're gonna get even bigger. So I spent a lot of time looking at Mildred Thompson's paintings from the 1990s and I noticed that in addition to this shape there was also what looked to me like arch shapes that came through. So we'll go this way, right? Like maybe over here there's another one of these oval things and we just can't see it yet. 
Have you ever played with magnets? And have you ever had them click together and then push apart? Yeah, so that is kind of what Mildred was trying to show us here, was all those unseen forces that make magnets click together and push apart. And then, I don't know if you know this, but the Earth is covered in a magnetic field. And that is how birds navigate. And when I learned that, I was like, what? That's amazing. So imagine if you were a bird and you could just see the magnetic lines all over the earth. And that was how you knew which way was south. So when you were ready to go south for the winter, you would just go. Okay, and then we have these things and I don't even know what those blue things were in Mildred's painting, but I liked them because they popped. So her paintings had kind of a symmetry where one side looked like it balanced the other. And that's what I'm trying to go for here. If I put blue here, I wanna put blue here. run away from me. And then, let's see, kind of color this here, color that there. I felt like some of those magnetic paintings looked almost like an explosion. Like there was just stuff coming out of here, so I'm just gonna Right? Like maybe maybe this this can loop through there, like that, and then you can see it through there, right? Like maybe some links are somehow linked. This orange just does not want to work on this paper. That's pretty strange. Let's see if there's a different orange for me. What is this? Salmon. Well, let's see. Oh, yeah, that works better. So we'll just loop through there. And then go back to red to loop through there, right? And then, like we were talking about symmetry before, we'll go the other way. But I want to start here instead of starting in the middle and make a big sort of a V shape. A V shape there. And then we'll make a V shape here. Then let's see. Go like that. So we're going to echo this curve. Then we're going to echo this curve. And the thing about paintings like Mildred's is that you do them in layers. Mildred used oil paints. And when you use oil paints, you can't just paint and paint and paint. You have to be careful and you have to let your layers dry. Because if you don't let your layers dry, you wind up with mud. And we'll talk about painting with mud next time on Meet an Artist, Be an Artist. Let's see, I wanna put something in this space. I wanna put something in this space. I'm gonna take some blue and I'm gonna go this way. We're following this line now. And maybe, maybe I'll make them a little bit fatter. So they're less like dashes, more like tiny rectangles. And they're on their way to do their tiny rectangle business. And then we can outline them in a brighter blue, which is a fun trick because it makes things pop. It's like pop. <laughs> and you can always go back in with your crayons and bulk up some lines if you want to. So like here, I like that one to be a little bit darker. I like that one to be a little bit darker. And this and that are both crayon, but they look different. 
because this crayon is just right on the paper and this crayon is sitting on top of that layer of paint we put down first. I'm gonna come through here, bulk up some of these guys. We're trying to convey a sense of movement here. That's why we're not using just straight lines. We get all these dashes and dots. What do you think, friends? You think we should keep working? You can keep working on your own if you like. Um, all right, so let's put this to the side and we're gonna meet our second artist for meet an artist, be an artist. Our next artist is called Federico Herrero and he is still alive and making art. He was born in Costa Rica in 1978. He studied art in college in New York City. And he says that his inspiration comes from his home country's cultural traditions, nature, and politics. He mixes all of these things up to create these colorful abstract paintings. His work is large scale, and it often fills entire walls. As you look at his paintings, you begin to notice repeating colors and shapes. To me, these look like fields, or cities from above, like when you're flying in an airplane. He has said that each painting is a continuation of the one that came before. In 2018 into 2019, he did an installation at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago, where he not only painted the walls, but he also colored the glass. He has said that when he gets into a space and begins to paint, that he's really inspired by the space itself. If you go to YouTube, you can watch videos of him painting. So now we're gonna keep this idea of filling our page and using these layered colors and shapes, and we're gonna paint like Frederico Herrero. Are you ready? Okay, let's do it. Okay, let's paint like Federico Herrero. So again, we're gonna need to start with our supplies and I'm gonna use a small piece of paper cause it'll be much easier to cut, fill the whole thing up. And then this time we're gonna use a different kind of paint. So I have this little plastic lid that came off of a container from the grocery store and I'm gonna put my paint on there. I'm still gonna need a cup of water to keep my brushes clean in between colors. So I'm gonna put down a paper towel so I can wipe off my brushes and a cup of water. And then I'm gonna use a couple of different brushes this time. I'm gonna use a big brush to make big shapes. I'm gonna use a medium square brush or flat brush to make medium shapes. And then I've got this pointed brush. It's got a nice tip on it. And I'm gonna use that to make sure that my edges look nice and clean. For paint, I went to the craft store and I just got some uh, craft paint, here you can see it. It's like a dollar and a half to two dollars a tube. Um, you don't need to buy a whole kit. You can just pick out your favorite colors from Frederico's paintings and use those. Uh, so I'm gonna put my paint on my little palette here. Um, and the thing I really liked about Frederico's paintings was I liked how he used a lot of blues and a lot of greens. And then a couple of what I felt like were unexpected colors, like those pinks and those oranges. So those were the colors that I picked for today. You can use any color that you like that makes you happy, okay? That's the nice thing about art. Because you don't wanna make something exactly like somebody's made it, you wanna make it your own. And the best way to do that is to pick colors that make you happy. Woo, that's a bright orange. And I got one last color. Can you guess what it is? It is that bright pink that I first showed you. There we go. All right. Now I mentioned before how you can go on YouTube and watch Frederico paint. And I had to do that before I figured out how he did all this stuff. So what I noticed when I was watching Frederico paint is that 
he starts with the outline and then he fills the shape in. So I'm gonna start with this green, kind of reminds me of green grass in the spring and I'm gonna make a shape that's like almost an oval. Right, there we go. So first he would make the outline and then he would fill it in. And the video I watched of him painting, he was painting a playground in London. He was painting their playground by an apartment building. And I thought, well, that is really fun. All right, so you see how these edges are kind of lumpy bumpy. Yeah, I'm not gonna worry about that right now, but I am gonna go back later and I'm gonna use this little pointy brush to clean those up. So, and since my brush has already got green on it, I'm just gonna keep going with some green shapes. I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna make a really funny looking square. And then I think I want another one up here there we go. Okay, and this is still a little bit wet, so I'm going to add a little bit more green down here. And like I said, because this is craft paint, I can always paint over it later. So I'm going to clean my brush. All right, and then I'll just Dry it off there, because I'm not watercolor painting now. And then, let's see, what color should we do next? Um, let's try this pink. I've always liked pink and green next to each other, but we don't want to get them too close because then they'll start to blend and we're not trying to do that. So let's see, we will make sure that we don't get too close. All right, so we'll make like a little rainbow shape here. Oop. It's interesting to me in Frederico's art how sometimes there's shapes that look like rainbows or like tunnels and sometimes it's just circles and squares and ovals. All right, I like that. I think that's kind of fun. Um, it looks like I gotta move this. So let's move that. And then we'll do a circle right here, a circle-ish, a sort of circle. There we go. And then I'm gonna rinse my brush. Let's see, are we almost dry down there? All right, dry. So I'm going to go like this and just make a soft little square. And then, do you know why I'm moving around while I paint? Why well, I'm not just painting in one direction? Uh, one, because Frederico doesn't do that. But two, also, when I'm doing that, I can think about the composition of my work. So I can think about, does this look balanced? Does it need a little bit more? Is there a sense of movement? So that's part of the reason that I'm not working from the bottom up. And also it gives you a chance to let your paint dry in between layers because you can kind of see the green peeping through there and we don't want that. So let's see, we've got this blue and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna make a big oval. Oh, see I went through the pink and you can kind of see the pink peeping through. So that tells me the pink is not quite dry yet. But that's okay. Because with this paint, I can just wait for it to dry and paint over it later. Which is the nice thing about this craft paint. Can't do that in a lot of other paints. All right. Let's see. Um... Let's do a little blue over here. Like there's a little itty bitty oval living off the side there. We'll cover that up right there. And 
we'll do a little one right here. Like there's a half a circle just living over here. All right, all right, all right. Uh, I really like the way that blue and that pink and that green look together. Let's see, what can we put back here? What do you think? Oh, well, maybe it's time to try some of these surprising colors. Because right now we're sticking with a pretty pastel palette. So let's see. Let's try. Let's try this bright pink. That's kind of fun. All right, so I'm going to come behind this guy like he's been here the whole time. Right? And remember, if you put it down there and you decide, I do not like that, you just wait for it to dry and you paint over top of it. But uh, I do like that. Well, but you see how you can see through it. I'm gonna have to do more than one layer, I think. Let's see, and I'm gonna do some up here. There we go, and let's see. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna come over here, and I think what I'm gonna do is do a big one that peeks behind this little arch. Okay, well, I've only got one color left that I haven't used yet. I don't know if I'm done with this pink though. Well, we can always go back to it. But I'm having some ideas about sticking this bright orange on this painting. All right. This orange is almost the color of pumpkins. So I wanna put some over here, but I gotta wait for some of that to dry. Um, and I want to put some here but while I wait for that to dry. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to paint right over top of this guy. Right? Let's see. That's kind of fun. And then I think later I'll get my pink back out and I'll fill it up there. Um, let's see, what else can we do? Because we want to put some in here. Just come over here. Because we know this blue is dry. It's almost like building a puzzle. some orange here like there's a circle hiding behind all those guys so I don't forget that I'm just gonna go ahead and go like this there we go so let's see what else can we do we got a couple of open spots and we got a couple of colors. So what I'm trying to do now is fill in my empty spots and not have the same two colors touching each other. I think it's gonna be a little tricky. So let's see, maybe a little more orange right here. You see where that's peeking through? Yeah, we'll have to come back later and put on another coat of paint. Or maybe we just leave it peeking through. I don't know, what do you think? Let's see, we need to fill in this space. So what if 
What if we put in a little pink oval here? That's a little bit different, a little bit fun. And then I think we need some more green over here. So I'm gonna make a green circle right here. And then I'm gonna take this green and I'm gonna move it all the way up like that. this blue and I'm just gonna make this blue climb up here I think I might even tuck some blue under there okay so let's see what else do we want to do here there's not a whole lot of that pale pink on there, is there? No. And I feel like this circle is kind of lonely all by itself. So maybe let's put in another circle of pale pink. Hmm. Let's see. Hmm. I think I want it over here. All right, okay, then we'll just go up here, we'll just go like that. All right, okay, so now I'm gonna get out this little pointy brush, get a little bit wet, and then I'm gonna get this blue, and I'm gonna come in here, and I'll clean up this edge. Here we go. Is there anywhere else that needs a little cleanup? Yep, 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 right here. All right, I think we're done. I think we have painted like Frederico Herrero. I hope you enjoyed painting with me. I enjoyed painting with you. So I hope you enjoyed meeting our artists today, Mildred Thompson and Frederico Herrero. And I hope you had fun making art. And I look forward to seeing you in the spring when we do another round of Meet an Artist, Be an Artist. If you have any artist suggestions for me, please let me know. I'm always interested in learning about new artists and how they created. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.